Good day, good day, all. This is Charles with the Exodus Logistics Learning Center, ELLC, America's number one dispatcher and freight broker training. Today, we, we are continuing in our how-to video series, and we're going to cover um, the filling out the carrier packets, filling out carrier packets, okay? So how is that done? So as a dispatcher, when you um, when you find a load for a broker or for your carrier with a broker <clears throat> from the load board, you call the broker. <clears throat> First, you communicate the load with your carrier to make sure that it is a load that they are interested in taking. If so, do you decide your numbers as far as how much you're going to put your percentage on top of that and then renegotiate a rate with the broker. Okay. Once you do that, you have all of those things. You have your numbers set before you call the broker to negotiate a rate. You already have your numbers calculated into the equation before you call the broker. That's always a given. Um, you go to the load board, find a load, discuss it with your carrier. Carrier agrees. Carrier agrees with the load. Um, you calculate your numbers. Let's say, for example, it was a uh, $3,000 load. You charge 10%. 10% of 3,000 is 300. Add that to the 3,000. That's 3,300. You call the broker. You negotiate, let's say, 5,000. I'm not sorry, uh, 3,500. <laughs> 3,300 to 3,500 or 3,600. Right, you go up a little bit higher because brokers are going to come down. Right, so you talk to the broker about the load, picking up from A going to B. They say, uh, "What's your MC number?" You give them the MC number of the carrier. It's discovered that the carrier's MC number is not an approved carrier under that brokerage. Broker says, "No problem." Who do I send our carrier packet setup packet on board onboarding packet? broker carrier agreement to. Of course, you send it to, the broker sends it to you, the dispatcher, to start that process of filling out the carrier packet. And this is assuming that you have a limited power of attorney in your possession from your carrier when you first got set up with the carrier as far as a dispatcher agreement, limited power of attorney and carrier profile. If you do not have a limited power of attorney you're taking a risk there, it's advisable and better to have one. That way your carrier is giving you legal notarized authorization to represent them, okay? So what's the carrier packet? What's the onboarding packet? So in our members portal for the members, we'll go to forms and documents. Under the forms and documents, under the broker's onboarding documents, we have the broker carrier agreement and the rate confirmation. These are the two documents that's needed for your carrier, if they are not already an approved carrier, to get set up and approved with by the broker. The first of which is this document right here, the broker carrier agreement, okay? You need to fill this out as a dispatcher and submit this to the broker, along with other pieces of information that the broker needs from your carrier in order for the broker to approve that carrier to be a part of that brokerage and to move loads for that brokerage, okay? Broker carrier agreement. So this is, this is an example of one. This is a template in our portal for you to look at and go over. Um, so this is a transportation, the transactional contract. This is a transportation agreement that is entered on this. So let's, let's, today is the 28th of April. So we'll say this 28th day of April, 2022, by and between, let's say the broker will be ABC Freight Brokerage and the carrier will be XYZ Logistics, right? And then whereas the broker, is a person or a company who arranges with an owner, with an operator, owner operator, 
to carry goods of another person or a company for compensation by a commercial um, motor vehicle and may be duly registered where required. So that's what the role of a broker is. A broker is someone who arranges with an operator to carry the goods of another person or company for compensation by a motor carrier, a motor vehicle, commercial motor vehicle. That's what a broker does. They arrange for the transportation of the freight, okay? Carrier is a person or company registered. Registered means operating under, under authority issued by all applicable regulatory authorities, namely the FMCSA and DOT. So they are the person registered to carry the goods, property of another person or company by commercial motor vehicle for compensation. So brokers arrange for compensation, motor carriers carry the goods for compensation. Both parties are being paid for this. And then whereas the shipper is the customer of the broker, which is true. And it's also known, but not limited to the names consigner, consignee, and receiver. Consigner was another name for shipper, consignee and receiver are, two, are, are used interchangeably, all right? Now, carrier represents and warrants that they're just, they're just justifying and making known that they are an owner, an operator of a commercial vehicle and or motor carrier authorized. In other words, they have an MC number and DOT number. They're authorized to provide the transportation of goods under contracts with shippers and receivers and or brokers of materials, wares, merchandise, and general commodities. That's, that's A. B, this is what the carrier is saying. They're, they're warranting this. They're, they're making a statement. This is their role. They shall transport the goods under its own operating authority and subject to the terms of this agreement. C, they make the, makes the representations herein for the purpose of in, inducing the broker to enter into this agreement. D, agrees that a shipper's insertion of broker's name as the carrier on a bill of lading shall be for the shipper's convenience only and shall not change broker's or carrier status as defined above, okay? E, will not re-broker or double broker, the carrier saying they will not, they won't get another carrier, so they gotten a load from a broker. They don't want to broker this load that they got as a carrier to another carrier. That's double broker. And they're saying it right here. Will not rebroker, assign, or interline the shipments here under without prior consent of broker. If carrier breaches this provision, broker shall have the right of paying the monies it owes carrier directly to the delivering carrier in lieu of payment to carrier. So, in other words, if they rebroker it, the, care, the broker is not going to pay the person who rebrokered it. They're going to pay the person who delivered it, the carrier. Double broker. Okay. Upon broker's payment to delivering carrier, carrier shall not be released from any liability to broker under this agreement. So, what that means is they're going to pay the person who delivered it, but the person who rebrokered it is still going to be held liable. Okay. In addition to the in, indemnity obligation, Carrier will be liable for consequential damages for violations of this uh, paragraph. So, okay, so this section is part one, is just telling them what the carrier is representing, what they're saying, what they're stating, and they're going to do. Okay. And carrier will notify broker immediately if operating authority is revoked because the broker needs to know they are trusting the carrier to run this load as an authorized carrier, right? So if, if your authority is revoked, revoked, suspended, or rendered inactive for any reason, you, the carrier, needs to need, need to let the uh, broker know. And you being the dispatcher, if you understand this as well. So carriers should understand what this means, right? So these are the responsibilities of the carrier. Now let's go to the brokers. Number two, brokers' responsibilities. Shipments, billing, and rates, right? Part A. So broker agrees to solicit and obtain freight 
transportation business for a carrier to the mutual benefit of the carrier and the broker, right? Basically a fair rate based on what the shipper's paying them, they're gonna give the carrier a fair rate, not trying to be greedy, right? And this particular agreement says, and shall offer carrier at least three loads or shipments annually. Of course, they're gonna offer more, right? Broker shall inform carrier of A, place of origin and destination of all shipments. That's what the BOL is for, the bill of lading. And B, if applicable, any special shipping instructions or special equipment requires of requirements of which broker has timely, has been timely notified and timely notified by the shipper, the customer. So the customer gives the broker special instructions. It is the broker's job to tell the carrier what those special instructions are. Broker agrees to conduct all building services for shippers or two shippers. Brokers, that's who the brokers get paid by. They get, paid, they get paid by the shippers, so they are building the shippers. Carrier shall invoice broker for its carrier charges as mutually agreed in writing by fax or by uh, electronic means, okay? Contained in broker's load confirmations or what we call rate confirmations, okay? other broker uh, responsibilities as far as the rates, as far as payments. So you can kind of peruse through this broker carrier agreement or set up packet, carrier packet, onboarding packet, however you want to term it, and just kind of peruse, look at the rates, right? Additionally, any rates which may be verbally agreed upon shall be deemed confirmed in writing where carrier has billed the agreed rate and broker has paid it, okay? So, Payment, the parties agree that broker is the sole party responsible for payment carrier's charge, basically for paying the carrier. Failure of broker to collect payment from its customers shall not exonerate broker of its obligation to pay the carrier. So just because a shipper doesn't pay a broker doesn't mean the broker can't, shouldn't pay or, or the broker is excused from paying the carrier. The broker still has to pay the carrier. Some brokers could use a factory company to help with that, but yeah, okay. So um, the bond, if applicable, brokers shall maintain a surety bond on file with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, the FMCSA, in the form and amount not less than required by the agency's regulations, which is $75,000 in this case. Um, prior to the Obama administration, it was 10,000, okay? And then if applicable, broker will notify the carrier if its operating authority is revoked, suspended, or rendered inactive. In other words, if a broker loses their license, they have to tell the carrier so the carrier can go another way. They don't wanna run loads for a broker who doesn't have a license. Then they run the risk of not being paid, okay? Carrier's responsibilities, okay? their equipment, they wanna keep their equipment up, right? Subject to its representations and warranties in paragraph one above, carrier agrees to provide the necessary equipment and qualified personnel for completion of the transportation services required for broker and or its customers. Basically the right equipment needed for the job, okay? Bill of lading, the carrier, and this is under the carrier's responsibilities. Bill of lading. Carrier shall issue a uniform bill of lading for the property it receives for transportation under this agreement. And usually the bill of lading is given to the carrier once they get to the shipper to get loaded, to pick that load up to transport. Okay. Um, unless otherwise agreed in writing, carrier shall be fully responsible and liable for the freight when it takes and receives possession thereof. That's who takes possession of the freight. So when you do a broker carrier agreement and your carrier takes the freight, now they are liable for it. That's why, they, that's why they're required to have an operating authority. That's why they're also required to have insurance, right? So they take possession and the trailer or trailers is loaded regardless of whether a bill of lading has been issued and or signed and or delivered to carrier and which Responsibility and liability shall continue until delivery of the shipment to the consignee or the receiver. 
consignee, right? The con cons uh, the consignor is the shipper, consignee is the receiver, and the consignee signs the bill of lading or delivery receipt. That means that, that when, when a receiver signs a bill of lading, they have taken possession of the freight and now they have indemnified or removed from responsibility and liability the carrier, okay? So, lost damages. These are some just some um, common things according to the FMCSA, the, the 49 CFR, which is transportation. CFR stands for Code Federal Regulations. 49 is Title 49, which, which is the transportation title. Okay. So carriers shall comply with that. 49 CFR 370.1, as it uh, deals with liability. Um, Carrier liability for any cargo damage, loss, or theft from any cause shall be determined under the Carmack Amendment, 49 U.S. Code uh, 14706, as governing shipments according to its terms. Okay, so this just says what the carrier is liable for while they are in possession of the freight. Um, cargo liability, that's why that's required of the carriers to have. Insurance. Carrier shall furnish broker with certificate of insurance or insurance policies providing 30 days advance notice of cancellation or termination unless otherwise agreed upon and then subject to the following minimum limits so public liability 1 million or and then whatever the broker required and then any other requirements okay and you can go through that at your at your leisure assignment of rights Uh, carrier automatically assigns to broker all its rights to collect freight charges from shipper or any responsible third party on receipt of payment from broker. And then you have some miscellaneous uh, concepts here. Independent contractor, non-exclusive agreements, waiver of provisions, any disputes. Uh, so let's look at independent contractor, right? It is understood and agreed that the relationship between the broker and the carrier is that of independent contractor and that no employer employee relationship exists. In other words, the carrier doesn't work for the broker. They are, they are contracted to the broker with the broker carrier agreement and they are an independent contractor, okay? Broker has no control of any kind over carrier, including but not limited to routing of freight and nothing contained herein shall be construed to be inconsistent with this provision, okay? Non-exclusive agreement, carrier and broker acknowledge and agree that this contract does not bind the respective parties to exclusive services to each other. You're not bound, you can work with any, any carrier can work with any broker, any broker can work with any carrier, they are not exclusive to one another. That's what that means, okay? Go through waiver of provisions, any disputes you have, you take it up with the right parties. No back solicitation means that the carrier can't go behind the broker's back to the shipper and try to get those loads directly, right? So, and they can't do that for a term period of 24 months or whatever months that the broker deems necessary, right? So unless otherwise agreed in writing, Carrier shall not knowingly solicit freight shipments for a period of 24 or whatever amount of months following termination of this agreement for any reason from any shipper, consigned or consignee or other customer of the broker. When such shipments of shipper customers were first tendered to carrier by the broker, okay? So if you breach that, there's a certain charge, 20% um, is a baseline. So if your carrier breaches that, uh, no back solicitation clause in the broker carrier agreement, there is a penalty for that. Uh, confidentiality, basically you keep the customer's name and information confidential between you and the broker, the person that you made the um, agreement with, and you should be fine, right? And some other things in here, but you can read this through this at your leisure. I just wanted to touch on some of the some of the common points. And this is what you do as a dispatcher. You fill this out on behalf of your carrier. 
the broker's information will already be pre-filled out on their side. You as a dispatcher will put your carrier's signature there. You will print your carrier's name. You will print your carrier's title, which is owner. Always, always, always owner. And then company address, phone, fax, and emails. You can get that pretty much from your carrier profile that you received when you first got connected with your carrier under the dispatcher agreement, right? But remember, under carrier, you do not put any dispatcher information. You do not sign your dispatcher name. You do not print your dispatcher name. It is the carrier's information. You're signing the carrier's name and you're printing the carrier's name. You can do so because you are um, you have a limited power of attorney document that's notarized from your carrier giving you authorization to do that to represent them okay so you have authorization right so this is the broker carrier agreement now and this one was eight pages so some of them are a little bit smaller others are actually uh, links to an onboarding software like my carrier packets or rmis okay so let's go to google and show you RMIS, RMIS, uh, Register Monitoring Insurance Service, right? It's onboarding for transportation and property management. So automate your due diligence, right? Accelerate your onboarding. So that's what this is, Register Monitoring Insurance Service. And they have partnered with different TMS systems and low boards to have offer onboarding. The largest TMS system, of course, is McLeod's, okay? So that is RMIS, Register, Registry Monitoring Insurance Services, Transportation, and um, Property Management, Carrier Onboarding, right? The other one is called My Carrier Packets, I believe. My Carrier Packets, that's another um, onboarding system. My carrier packages, same thing, right? You, your, your company, your brokerage, a, a brokerage syncs with the software. And then what you do as a dispatcher, you will type in the MC or DOT number of the, uh, of the carrier that you're dispatching for, trying to find loads for, and it will automatically populate most of the data there because most of the data is a matter of public record of the carrier their MC, DOT number, their physical address, mailing address, because that's in the, uh, that's on the FMCSA's website. You know, safer company snapshot, that's all, that's a matter of public record. But then you filled in some of the other blanks, things that need to be replaced, right? So, so this is the uh, broker carrier agreement that you would fill out for your, uh, for, on behalf of your carrier, on behalf of your owner operator, truck driver, the person with whom you are dispatching for, right? So again, wherever it says carrier, you're going to put the carrier's information or their trucking company, XYZ Transportation or XYZ Trucking or whatever it's called, right? And the same thing at the last page when you sign it, right? You will put the carrier's information. You will put the carrier's signature there, the trucking company's um, representative's signature the owner operator signature and print name and title and other um, information that's required, okay? So that's how you fill out the broker carrier agreement when you are getting ready to book a load or at least getting ready to get your carrier set up with a specific brokerage. You only have to do this once per each brokerage that you get your carrier set up with. Let's say you have three brokerages you're trying to get your carrier loads for, and your carrier is not approved an approved carrier for any of those brokerages. You would have to do this part, broker carrier agreement, one time for each brokerage to get approved. Once you complete this broker carrier agreement and you send it to the broker, you will also need to send copies of your carrier's MC authority, copies of their certificate of insurance, a copy of their W-9 so that the broker can vet them out to make sure that they are who they say they are. If your carrier is using a factoring company, then you can send a credit app over a copy of the factoring company's credit app so that the broker can fill it out and get it back to the factoring company so that they can 
vet the broker out, run a credit check on the broker to see if they are factable and to extend a line of credit for purchasing those invoices, those receivables, those um, PODs, okay? So that's it for this broker carrier agreement um, section here. Hopefully that was a, a little bit more thorough detail of how to fill it out and what steps are involved in explaining some of the concepts in there. So you have a little bit more clarity. Um, some broker carrier agreements, again, are a little bit longer than others. This is one of the longer ones. Most cases, it'll be kind of short because brokers just want to get straight to the point. You fill it out, sign it so they can get that carry approved, so they can move that load and get it off their board, right? So um, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next how-to video. Thank you.